Here I am standing in front of the Three Sisters Garden, the modified pollinator garden that I started last year, around April 2019. I um, started with three small plots of native perennials, which I'll show you in a minute. And then this year, April 2020, I did a no-till garden to expand it to add veggies and herbs. So I'm just going to go around and show you some of the things that have grown here. This is just from about three months of um, growing. So over here on the edge, got this turnip growing. Soon we'll be ready to harvest. And all along this whole edge here, I have um, arugula, which has gone to seed and flowered, but it will be coming back probably for a second um, growth a little bit later. And I'll just go around this way and then I think this was an early girl tomato. I can't remember that I planted. And. Um, over here I have some golden beets and you can see that's also getting close to ready to harvest. And these are, hate the name, but bull's blood beets, a red beet there and some nasturtium. And then over here is one of the pollinator gardens that I started with. Like I said, I have over on the left, the blue flowers are um, cat mint, which really attract bees and butterflies and cats. Um, some flocks right there, the pink flower, some oxide daisy. This has really expanded in just, you know, second year. Um, and then I planted some radishes, which I've let gone to flower, and they're seeding too. And then climbing up this trellis here, the little poles, I have some, I have to consult my sheet here. So I have scarlet runner bean, blah hilled bean, and dragon tongue bean from um, Baker Creek, Baker's Creek. And this is part of the Three Sisters garden, so beans. And then over here I have some Costata Romanesca squash, a zucchini squash. And then in the back there are corn stalks there and there's corn stalks here and I also have some sunflowers that I planted to um, attract pollinators and um, this is a native corn called glass corn. I'm getting covered in bugs because as I said they attract pollinators and um, down here this is not looking too good. The um, Italian parsley has started to flower but that's okay. I'm just letting it flower because it will attract butterflies. And um, native swallowtails will eat it too, so that's okay. And I have some thyme that's flowering right there. And behind that, some anise hyssop and blue vervain. Those are some of the perennials that I planted. These are part of their perennial herbs that are medicinal and culinary. And then over here, in front, I have some more turnips or these collard greens. No, these are the collard greens. Okay, these are the southern collard greens. I forget sometimes. And then over here, I have uh, nasturtiums. These will get some bright orange, red, and yellow flowers, and you can eat the leaves, you can eat the flowers, and then some Italian parsley. And this was the third perennial bed uh, with native flowers as well as just um, flowers that will attract pollinators. So in the front, um, the feverfew is already flowered. It's starting to go to seed right now, but it's um, a great herb for anti-inflammatory. And then behind there is some um, Monarda. That's the uh, native purple Monarda. And then over here is, um, this is a perennial sunflower, Helianthus. 
And then in the back you may recognize purple coneflower. And those just started blooming a few days ago and all of these attract so many bees and butterflies. And um, down here I have some tarragon which is kind of getting overrun by the other flowers so that may end up getting moved at some point. And then I don't know if you can see it but down here I have some prickly pear cactus. I also need to do some weeding there. But there's a little spot with prickly pear cactus. It needs more space too. And over here, I think these were the turnips. Yes, look down. I can see some turnips starting there. But you can eat the greens, and the greens are awesome. They taste just like collard greens. So a big patch of turnips there. Over here on the corner, I have early prolific straight neck squash, which kind of got crowded out by the turnip. And then this is kohlrabi. Um, huge patch of kohlrabi which is looking really nice too. Um, it starts to form these little purple bulbs that you can shred into a slaw like cabbage. It's in the cabbage family. And then this squash here, this is a vining squash and it's kind of also taking over my um, other yellow squash here. But this vining squash is called zucchino repigante squash and it vines this whole section here is the squash vining just two plants that go all the way along the edge of the garden there and um, some corn here in the background too but this makes really cool let me find them um, squashes like that I actually picked one yesterday. It was big enough to harvest. So I'm looking for one. I should have waited and shown you with it on the vine. All right, so anyway, it gets this really cool little curved squash that you can eat as a summer squash like zucchini, or you can let it stay on the vine and it will get a hard skin Right, there's a couple that are a little bit bigger and um, you can eat it like a winter squash so this is loaded with uh, those squash which will be ready probably another couple of weeks and the other thing that's cool is I don't want to break it off but you can see that giant flower um, this particular variety of squash is known for its squash blossoms so if you do stuff squash blossoms, these are really great. And I'll be um, probably doing a cooking demo showing you how to make stuffed zucchini blossoms using those. All right, and back here we have some borage, um, which just once you plant it, it will grow and just continue to come back. It's almost impossible to get rid of, um, but the bees love it. It makes these beautiful little blue flowers that are like stars that are also edible. And some more back side of the sunflowers here. And then back to this bed with the oxide daisy. And under here in the early spring before it got covered by the cat mint, I have strawberries growing. So I got a couple handfuls of strawberries. Um, early in the season around June and then over here I have some of the chaga beets growing which also started to get overgrown and then some basil and back to our tomato plant so that's the garden here's the full look at it it's maybe I'm really bad with um, showing distance or gauging distance but maybe like four feet by 20 feet or so um, but it's in this patch of yard right next to my driveway between the neighbor's yard and mine and it gets full sun so um, that's why I decided to plant a garden here so thank you for watching